Hey traders, checking out in the cryptocurrency space, we had a bull break of our tightening range since we last checked in. Are we in for new all-time highs or are we going to see tightening weekly patterns from here? How are we stacking up with the broader market? Which coins are standing out as strong? Let's check it all out on the charts. So we'll start it off with the broader market and the dollar. And the S&P 500 is continuing to show us weakness. So we're dropping to a clear lower low. We're not at daily oversold conditions. We know we're scouting a monthly higher low bigger picture, but there's a lot of space where that monthly higher low could form. The bears have complete control in the short term as we watch our hourly downtrends. The dollar is seeing daily consolidation with lots of space for a daily higher low to form. And we would have to lose the daily uptrend for any shift in momentum because the dollar bulls have control of the monthly, weekly, daily uptrend. So with all that being said, the Bitcoin bulls continue to show us relative strength on a daily basis. They are not immune. Nice move. They are not immune to the weakness in stocks. For example, this dump today happened, in my opinion, in large part due to the stock market dumping. We held on when the stock market opened and then we rolled over. That's a significant drop, but then a V-shaped recovery, 3% drop straight into a move up towards the highs. Very impressive recovery at this point, And that's keeping these bulls confidence. We're now watching a potential megaphone, depending on where we top out here. I'll be watching this kind of pattern. But again, the fact that we recovered and we're back at the high is a great sign. Since we last checked in, we knew that volatility was incoming and we knew that the bulls favored a break. The bulls favored a break because the most likely scenario was a weekly high or low. And because the bulls were holding on much better on the daily time frame than the broader market. That was a point in favor of the bulls as well. I highly suggest going back and watching the video from last week if you didn't see it or even re-watching it again. It's easy to go back in hindsight and say this was the most likely scenario and this and this. But go back to that video before the break took place and look at all the details that stood out to us to have us look at this and say, well, that's not surprising to us at all that we got a bull break, increased volume and volatility, and a nice move to the upside. And again, if you want to impress your friends who don't know technical analysis, all you got to do is wait for a tight equilibrium and say things are about to break. And when you have confidence in what the longer term time frame is dictating, the most likely direction for the break will be, you can portray yourself as a wizard and everybody will think you're a genius. Really all it is is just an equilibrium and a tightening range and you see them thousands of times and you know that that's just how they are most likely to play out. So at this point, Bitcoin is looking up at 53,000. That is the key level. And there's two scenarios of what could happen here. We confirm a weekly trend change, or I should say we confirm weekly continuation of the uptrend with a break of 53,000. And then everybody's going to be talking about 60, 59.5 and 65. Or we reject from 53,000 and continue to tighten up. Now, normally, because of the size of this retracement, I would be keeping an eye out for the potential of a lower high to form because we did end up pulling back on this retracement 55%. So normally, a lower high would be more likely than not. So keeping an eye out for that possibility. And if we set a weekly lower high compared to 53, we would then look for another higher low compared to 396 and we could trade within this tightening range until November even. But again, we continue to stand out really strong and the bulls are positioned really well for any broader market bounce. And there's a lack of resistance with where we stand right now. And simple statement at this point, we would need to break 46.9 for a weekly lower high to be shaping up. So that level was just hit a few hours ago. And this is just trapping shorts. Any shorts that were jumping in here over the last day are now underwater on high volume. Very impressive bounce. But the bottom line is, if we do not break 46.9, then we're not setting a weekly lower high. That level must break for the weekly lower high to be shaping up. So that's going to be my new short-term line in the sand as a gauge for strength. I did sell, so I had... A position from when I entered on the break of 41,000, it was only supposed to be a day trading position. I then went away for the weekend and I just never got stopped out. I sold that in the upper 47s on the initial break. And again, I still have my monthly swing positions in Bitcoin and Ethereum from those higher lows long ago and moving my stops up. 
So for those monthly swing positions, my stops are now under these weekly higher lows. Because if we break these weekly higher lows from this point, that's enough of a red flag for me that I would want to lock in that profit and go back to a fresh clean slate to reassess the situation. But if that if those levels hold, I'm going to be holding these positions ideally until new all-time highs. The dominance chart is close to a bull break here. And we saw a scenario on the break of the equilibrium where we broke bull on one big bull candle. And this is Bitcoin leading the way, breaking its daily equilibrium bullish. And then we faded for days and gave it all back. What was happening at that point in time? The bull break happened. The market gained confidence in the cryptocurrency space. And then we saw all the altcoins act as laggards and then far out exceed the Bitcoin bull move in terms of percentage gains. So initial bull break led by Bitcoin. And then as Bitcoin tightened up on the hourly and traded a bit sideways, the profits rotated around to altcoins and altcoins played laggard catch up and then exceeded the bounce or exceeded the breakout, I should say. But here we are again, we're doing it again where Bitcoin is leading the way up right now on this four hour bull recovery. It was a bear break straight into a bull break. And again, we know that means there's a megaphone somewhere if that's a pattern that's shaping up. And so what we're going to be watching for is the same thing going to happen. Are we going to fail to break the recent high of 4306 on the dominance chart? And are we just going to see a prolonged hourly downtrend if Bitcoin just starts to trade sideways on the hourly now for a prolonged period of time? If the Bitcoin dominance chart breaks 4306 convincingly, and then the next daily level 4364, if both of these levels break, because we're still in an equilibrium right now, if both of those levels break while it's Bitcoin leading the way up, that will be a notable shift for me. And I will look at that and say, okay, that is a different relationship than we've been seeing between Bitcoin and the altcoin space in the recent past. And that will definitely get my attention. But if we don't break 43 and 4364, then it's just going to be continued Bitcoin bull move up, rotation into the alts as the dominance drops back down after that initial move up. Ethereum. So Ethereum trying to set a daily higher low. And it's a potential daily bull flag at this point. Resistance is 34.89 and 36.76. And nice recovery on this bounce, but still hourly resistance here. If we reject right now from 34.26, we'll have an hourly equilibrium to be keeping an eye on. If we break that level, we still need trend changes. Again, this is a bit odd action because we are coming from a fresh low. So we still have to confirm an hourly trend change if we're going to be talking about a daily bull flag confirming. But again, this is just a move right now that is trapping some short-term shorts and keeping the pressure on them. And ETH BTC is weak. It tried to break bullish on the daily. It did not see any follow-through. It had a chance for follow-through. We had a four-hour higher low set here and we failed and then rolled over. So I'm considering this a rejection from daily resistance and the ETH BTC bulls still have a lot of proving to do. We are technically in an uptrend, but it's a weak one and it's weak enough to the point where we may set a weekly lower high and then roll over and lose the weekly uptrend. And that would be notable to me if that were to take shape, just like it would be notable if the dominance chart breaks 43.64. The other main name that we were watching for the equilibrium break was Sol. Why were we watching Sol? Because it had a beautiful daily equilibrium, but not only that, the BTC pairing had an even more beautiful daily equilibrium that pl was playing out a lot longer. And the way that this broke is the Sol USDT pairing broke daily lower high resistance of 149 first, and then Sol BTC broke its daily resistance and gave it follow through and momentum. So the bull signal at 149, then ended up with almost $30 of follow through, essentially an 18% bull move. So it was just picture perfect breakouts of daily equilibriums. And again, the ideal scenario of bull pairings breaking bullish. That being said, we now have to be watching because anything under the all time high on Seoul is just a weekly lower high. And an equilibrium is entirely possible here. Obviously, what Bitcoin does is going to help dictate that whether or not Bitcoin rejects from 53,000. But the same thing for the sole BTC chart. Anything under the all-time high here is a weekly lower high. Watch our stair-step pattern 
And again, there's a video on our YouTube as to what that strategy is, but we have a higher low every week for eight weeks in a row now. It will definitely get our attention when that pattern breaks. But as long as it holds, the bulls are in control. AXS USDT, monster move. Little inverse daily head and shoulders back here. Daily trend change confirmed. Weekly higher low set. And this pullback was significant. So I'm certainly not, you know, crypto has an asterisk next to it. Because if you, again, you show me this sole USDT weekly chart, and you tell me that's Apple, I say 85%, 80%, we're going to set a weekly lower high here. But if you tell me it's a crypto name, it's only 55%, 60%. Why? Because it takes a lot less dollar volume to move these names as opposed to Apple with a massive market cap. So the example for AXS, if you showed me as this bull break was happening here, you know, are we looking for a weekly lower high? I would say, yeah, keep an eye out for it. But again, just dollar volume surges in and rips it to new all-time highs. Any individual coin that hits all-time highs is bullish for the cryptocurrency space. Doesn't matter if you're not making money from it. Doesn't matter if it's not your favorite coin. It's on the same team. So this is a great sign that we've hit a new all-time high. And I made $0 from this AXS bull break, but it's benefiting my long-term no-touch positions and my swing positions in the cryptocurrency space as a whole because it's bringing confidence and it's bringing money. Big dollar gains, big percentage moves, brings money to the space. So currently we're keeping an eye on some back burners and AXS will be on back burner watch here. We're very close to first 15 minute oversold conditions. Do we have a falling wedge setting up? I'd be keeping an eye on this downtrending support line. Looks like we may hit this and get to 15 minute oversold conditions aligning with it. This is more of a channel than a wedge. So 15 minute first oversold conditions, scouting a four hour higher low. I would prefer if it was aligning with the EMA 12 support. That's just my ideal scenario. But bulls are watching for this 15 minute RSI to hit oversold, knowing we have a ton of space for a four hour higher low to form. We know we have to lose the four hour uptrend for any signs of a daily top being set. And for right now, you look at the daily candle, you say, uh-oh, that looks like a climax and a, a big upper wick. But then you zoom in and say, well, if we form a four-hour high or low and make our way back up to the upper 140s, that can potentially eliminate some of that wick before the end of the day. So let's see if we get 15-minute oversold conditions on AXS. AXS BTC, how does it compare? Any clues? Same thing. Looking for the four-hour high or low, 15-minute RSI already oversold. So a little bit weaker but still very similar and looking for both four hour higher lows to be set at the same time to try and help the size of that bounce. FTT USDT, there's a handful of names that are still in daily equilibriums. And when I pulled up this chart two hours ago or an hour ago to make this video, we were more within this equilibrium. The point is there's a handful of names to be watching as laggards because we already got a bunch of names breaking equilibriums bull. Well, what about the names that have not? And I'm just looking at these resistances and we failed daily resistances. We came down and we're trying a daily higher low here. And let's see if the bulls can act as laggards and break 58.75, 59.57. We certainly know we want to keep an eye on the BTC pairing, which needs to confirm a four hour trend change if we're going to see follow through for FTT here. Again, I love BTC pairings that are in falling wedges because they do often give us some really nice signals for when the US dollar pairing Starts to shift momentum. But again, the BTC pairing has to make a bull break for the US dollar pairing to get followed through. ADA, same thing. It's a daily equilibrium. It's a nice and tight range. We're looking for a daily higher low compared to 202. The bulls have to break 232 and 246 to prove follow through. ADA BTC did break a key support level. So that's not ideal. We are in a clear downtrend and bear breaks on the weekly. So that is not ideal. I like ADA less because of this ADA BTC weakness. But it's worth keeping an eye on the BTC pairings for shifts. Other names that were laggards, we know Doge and Ripple and Litecoin are always laggards to keep an eye on. And if they start running, then we know that, again, it's further confidence in the crypto space. SHIB is seeing a run here. Big time breakout from key weekly resistance. So as soon as you clear these resistance levels, 
you start to enter an area with a lack of resistance and bulls are taking advantage of that. 1208 is the next level. Why are we running? I'm told, I'm not following along fundamentally, but I'm told somebody bought 40 plus million of SHIB and they're anticipating the potential that Robinhood uh, then becomes a place where you can buy it. So there is opportunity and confidence out there. And again, every time I've looked at the cryptocurrency space in the last week and a half of trading, I've thought, wow, we're holding on really well with some broader market fear out there in stocks. And that remains the case. So again, just in summary, the big picture, what are we looking for in the short term? We got a megaphone to keep an eye on. But other than that, the big question that we're going to get the answer to sometime within the next week or so, are we primed for a weekly resistance break or do we need to tighten up further into November before we get a break of the weekly tightening range? And I will continue to favor bulls. Again, I've, I've moved up my line in the sand because previously it was down here. And now that we've set a clear weekly new high or low, it's up here. And I will make a simple statement that if bulls are holding 39.6, they have complete control. If that level is lost, I stop out of my swing positions and reassess the situation. That is where we stand. Hope you all got a piece of that daily equilibrium bull break. Ideal entries are playing off of support. Second best entries were entering on resistance breaks. And we should know as we approach this coming weekend, whether or not 53K is in the cards or not. I appreciate you watching. Hope you're well, do good things, and we will check in in a day or two.